Afternoon guys, today is July 15th, I think. I think it's the 15th of 2022. If not, it's the 14th. I think it's the 15th. Anyway, um, going to a no AC call to a customer I believe we've never been to in Katona, New York. It says no AC, second floor. And we'll see what's going on. Today, New York State's like 87, which isn't bad. It's like a nice 87, like I was saying the other day. It's, I mean, it's starting to get a, you know, the heat's starting to, to load up because the nights have been only going down to like 70 now the last two nights, but that's okay. I'll take it. If this is anything like any other state in the country, please write a comment in the below, uh, in the comments below because I, really have only been to tri-state area in florida but uh i mean i've been to texas but i mean like let me know a state that has basically 65 degree nights and 85 degree daytime and i'll move there tomorrow or at least when my son's 21 then i'll take it with me but uh all right guys let's see what's going on when i get over there a shout out to my son he's 17 years old he's been in uh, technical school for HVAC for the last three years but last summer he started in my company at the sheet metal shop in the summer and then just yesterday they started putting him out on as a helper for installations and I'm just very proud of him and I'm sure he's gonna watch this but I love you Nicholas I'm Paul. Good. Nice to meet you. you too. What's going on? How many systems do you have here? Two. Two. So one for the basement, which serves the main, and one for the attic, which serves the top? Correct. And the one on the um, second floor is cooling, but it's not cooling enough. Okay. So it is blowing air. It it's moving blowing. air. Yes. Did you check like the it filter? It gets down you know, at night back down to Because it's been 65 degrees out. But it goes up to 78. When you're calling for 72. Yeah. So let's do that. Let's go to the thermostat. Can you bring it down to 65 for me? Okay. And then show me where the condenser is? Sure. That would be great. And have you checked the filter? Uh, I changed the filter. I can tell you the day I changed the filter. But within three months? Yes. Okay. So yeah, just bring uh, it down. Data that I did the house there. Okay. I'll turn it down to 65. And will you turn the one on this level off so I know which one yep. is? Yep. Thank you so much. Can I come in? Yeah. So both of your systems are frozen. So I don't know how one's cooling and unless it just didn't freeze enough. Really? Yeah, come on out, I'll show you. It's Saturday. So yep, yep. I'm on backup and we have about three guys ahead of us, uh, ahead of me. But that's because a couple of us volunteered okay. for uh, tomorrow. So let me so uh, call an AC call or no AC call for the attic unit for the upstairs um, saying it wasn't cooling. 
I got there in both systems, as you saw, I had frozen line sets. Um, I'll finish this video tomorrow morning when I come back. I pulled the disconnects, had him put the fan on only on both thermostats to defrost the ice. And um, I'll finish the video tomorrow and see what the issue is. He says he changes his filter. I'll check all that tomorrow before I check my pressures. Hey guys, good morning. It's July 16th, 2022. I'm going back to that job uh, from yesterday with the two frozen units. And we'll see what's going on when... We'll see what's going on when I get there, what happened. All right, guys, so I checked the uh, filters on both systems. Fan operation. Um, put these back. I hook up some surge protectors today, too. Uh, but anyway, so I hooked up... Um, I mean, I checked the uh, the fans and the filters. Everything's operational. So before I get my gauges, or I, before I turn them on, I told the customer I'm going to grab my gauges for outside because I don't want them to start to freeze for any reason. I mean, usually it takes a little longer than that, but still. I'm going to hook up and see one at a time what's going on. And he said he left the fan running all night. That's good. In both systems. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, let me hook up the gauges and we'll see what's going on. Let's look at the line sets. I'm sure they're melted. Yeah. Yep. That's good. And that's good. Plug this one in. And uh, I'm going to have the customer. I have standing pressure 110 PSI. I'm going to have the uh, homeowner call for cooling and see what our pressures come down to. <coughs> All right. So we'll see how low our suction pressure comes down. This one I have off still. below 60 I'm sure probably 30 <laughs> decided to add refrigerant to both units um, I took the gauges off the unit I just showed you on the last clip and I put them on this unit over here and you'll see the same thing this one actually goes lower the saturation was like negative let's see so I'm really testing this one even though my gauges are right here
and I'll dial in superheat and all that stuff. Let me uh, start doing this. All right, guys, this one's gonna be good. Took two pounds eight ounces, two pack, two pounds nine ounces. Uh, I'm gonna let it run to get my superheat. But right now we have 36 degrees at our saturation evaporator coil. And the superheat, I gotta, that's gotta run to bring down. That'll come down hopefully about 18 on this, this unit. All right, so you got a seven degree superheat, 65 PSIG, R22. This one's working great. Customer's gonna bring the temperature to where he wants, and then I'm gonna get started on this one, guys. Evaporation temperature, saturation. That's crazy. Again, 32 is freezing. Okay, so we're gonna add some 22. That's good, 34.8, and I'm gonna give the superheat some time to change. So right now you have 35 degrees at your boil, saturation, and then we're gonna let this come down. I'm gonna leave this probably about here. It's coming down 26, that will come down. It's just gonna take, I can't sit here for hours. I'm gonna go take my temp split, I'm good. Uh, that was up in the 40s before. So it's going the right way, I'm moving heat. My pipe's nice and cold. Uh, temperature of my pipe is 65, we're good. We're golden child here. Yeah, oh yeah. We're good. It, that'll all come down to it, so. Um, that's it, thank you. Well, I'm gonna go take the temperature split. Let's see what we have here. And then I'll press hold after it. What did I tell you? Just take that too. Shoot. Damn. Just kidding. Oh, wow. <laughs> Were they upset the last couple days? You know, it gets hot at night. Can't rush perfection. Say thank you for watching. Um, please like and subscribe. That was a simple uh, charging of the unit. Um, I had one comment from someone who said, "Oh, it's bad for the environment. Why are you adding refrigerant?" Then I've had a co other co comments saying, um, "Why aren't you adding it? Why aren't you doing leak searches and this and that?" So you know what? I can't win. Listen, I added refrigerant and. Sometimes it calls for it, other times it doesn't. If it doesn't, it's usually because the customer can't afford it or because the customer doesn't, they want a new system. If it does, it's because they can't afford it. And we are allowed to add R22 one time when there's a leak or when there appears to be low, and then we cannot do it again. And that's the law right now. Um, we have to put a leak sealer in, which I did on each system. And, uh, that's that so i guess i think the epa standards say that if we had if they called us again i think they would we would have to say we can't and then it's up to the customer to call the government and say that they're going to replace it or not use it and that's could um that, i could be wrong and if i am just let me know in the comments um but again i i, I get these comments from some people like 
you can't win. It's either you, you don't, and then they think I'm a scumbag because I'm trying to sell them a new system. No, I'm, I don't make commission on selling systems. I am a technician who works for a company. Um, you know, I, I'm, I, I'm a technician. I actually like to fix things. That's the last thing I'd like to... I, there are technicians that try... To, that's all they do is sell. And to me, they're scumbags. But I, uh, I like to repair things. That's why I got in the trade. I always liked fixing my own car. I like repairing things. And I like when a customer smiles at the end and says, thank you. Um, because I helped them. You know, so but sometimes it calls for it. If it's a 1986 system that's flat out empty when I get there, and then I have people saying, "Why didn't you do a leak search? Why didn't I do a leak search?" I could, if the customer wants to take that chance, doing a leak search to then find out it's in a coil that can't be repaired, and then they still have to pay for the refrigerant. I mean, come on, it, it's I, I've never told a customer what to do. I tell people, I don't sell them. I, I, I tell them the facts. So I let them make their own decisions. But thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Love you all. Thank you.